Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Labor Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Now, unfortunately with this map that I have, which I showed you in the previous video, I had the Arctic side. Okay, and I was explaining how the blue ocean event will change the air patterns and ocean currents and conditions all around the Arctic Ocean and will greatly accelerate the melting of permafrost on land around the Arctic Ocean, leading to great releases of CO2 and methane. Also, the warm water will cause increased emissions from the marine sediments. And also we've got Greenland up there, so the melt rates, because the Arctic warming will skyrocket because there's no ice there to keep the place cool, right? To keep it close to the melting point, then the melt rates from Greenland will skyrocket. Now, we, I've explained how this um, causes great increases in the frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events. But it's not just in the Northern Hemisphere, it's globally. So I flipped over the map and now we have Antarctica Okay, um, now the, the abrupt climate change and the change in Arctic, the Arctic amplification causing great warming is disrupting the jet streams and the ocean currents and the, the whole heat engine of, of the earth basically. So what we're uh, seeing is extreme weather events not just in the northern hemisphere but also in the southern hemisphere. In fact, all over the planet. Some people think that the southern hem hemisphere is somewhat immune to huge wrenching changes, but I think that view is going very quickly based on what we're seeing uh, with, you know, globally. Okay, so this is a different beast here, Antarctica. For one thing, it's a, instead of the Arctic Ocean being you know, an ocean at the North Pole covered with sea ice at the moment, which is quickly going. We've got a massive continent at the South Pole with massive amounts of ice, three kilometers of ice. We've got massive, huge amounts of ice um, in, East, in, in glaciers of East Antarctica, West Antarctica. Um, and of course, Greenland is in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, that's a huge mass of ice there. Greenland was to melt completely. We're talking about seven meters of sea level rise. The total sea level rise, if all the ice melted on the planet, is about 70 meters or so, 72 meters, something like that. So the bulk of that ice, there's about five meters of that, is from the West Antarctic um, ice sheets. And the vast bulk of the rest of it is from East Antarctic. So if you add that all up, you get about 72 meters. So seven meters Greenland, five meters West Antarctic, that's 12. So you have about 60 or so uh, from East Antarctic. Not quite because there's also mountain uh, glaciers and things. And glaciers that aren't on Greenland or Antarctica. So we have a different beast here because there's ocean all the way around this continent. So we can get this, these circumpolar winds going around the continent, whipping around very, very fast. The jet stream in the Southern Hemisphere is generally, traditionally up to now, has, is, is uh, generally not as wavy. It's not as meridional. It doesn't have as much variation in the north-south direction because the continent's a lot colder than the Arctic. Okay, there's a high elevation effect as well, um, which is colder. And there's no land to disrupt the flow of the circumpolar winds or circumpolar currents. Now what's happening is, is because the Arctic is warming so quickly with this tarp, Arctic temperature amplification, it's warming because it's a lot darker 
than it used to be. So it's absorbing more and more sunlight. So therefore, the jet streams are weakening and the ocean currents are weakening that transport heat up there. So that heat has to go somewhere. Okay, so there's less heat moving from the equator to the Arctic. Therefore, the equator must be warming, right? But rather than, you know, there's a balance here. Some of the heat goes into warming, but a lot of the heat goes into evaporation of more water at the tropics. And that will not raise the temperature, that will just make it a lot more moister. But the heat has to go somewhere, so there's still an excess of heat. So basically there's more heat, therefore, that moves into the southern hemisphere um, than there used to be because of the, the huge Arctic warming from the sunlight, not from the heat transfer going up there. So, so basically, there's more heat going into the Southern Hemisphere. It's getting down to Australia region. It's zipping around. But what it does is it increases the temperature contrast with the cold Antarctic. So those uh, winds are actually, actually get stronger. Um, and the deflection in the Southern Hemisphere is to the left from the Coriolis force. It's, the right, it's to the right in the northern hemisphere, it's to the left in the southern hemisphere. So you get these uh, circumpolar winds deflecting to the left. So that tends to pull away from the continent, which has caused the sea ice to grow for the last uh, number of decades, up until recently. Um, and now the sea ice is actually decreasing. If you look at the graphs of the global sea ice, which is the sum of Antarctic plus Arctic, we had really bizarre things happening in the last few years. Basically, it started to get really, really low in 2017, 2016. Uh, there's anomalous behavior, and this year uh, we're starting to get extremely rapid melt of Arctic ice, and it's a winter in the southern hemisphere and the sea ice is not growing as much and the jet stream in the southern hemisphere seems to be getting a lot wavier than it used to be and because it has these ridges and troughs as the jet stream does in the northern hemisphere they penetrate through um, and we get some regions that are anomalously warm 20 degrees celsius warmer than normal Whereas right next to it, we get regions that are 20 degrees colder than normal and so on. Um, and of course, this is the southern extent of the thermohaline circulation as the Arctic continues to warm and warm and warm and there's smaller and smaller temperature gradient and the jet streams stall out or, or become basically super chaotic, fractured and stall out. Then what happens is we get more um, we get all these, uh, we get more effects, uh, monsoonal effects, as opposed to weather patterns being guided by the jet streams, you know, which is, which is the, the norm, which is what humanity sort of expects and has seen. But we're moving out of that and we're getting more and more monsoonal uh, control, more, more regions where there's huge drought, torrential rains, or huge drought, possibly fires, creating a cloud condensation nuclei, creating torrential rains. Okay, so this is a global phenomena. Okay, we don't want to forget the global south. We don't want to forget the southern hemisphere. Um, and uh, of course, this ice, lots of this ice on the West Antarctic ice sheet is sitting on bedrock that is very, very far below sea level. So even though the surface temperatures, you know, the war if it warms from minus 50 Celsius to minus 45 Celsius, you're not suddenly going to get melt, right? But the water temperature surrounding the continent is getting warmer and warmer, and it's undercutting underneath the ice, and it's melting the ice. And we know this from the gravity anomaly satellites that um, measurements over the years, and we also know that the melt rate of both Antarctica and Greenland is, is uh, increasing exponentially with a doubling period of about seven years or so. So 
Go back seven years, the melt rates in Greenland and Antarctica were, were, were half what they are now. Go back at seven more years, they were a half of a half, which is a quarter as fast. Go back 21 years, they were about an eighth as fast. So in 21, in a couple decades, we've had an eightfold increase in melt rates. You know, if you keep going into the future with seven year doubling rates, we're gonna get massive sea level rise. We're talking about something like seven meters by 2070. And you can Google, you know, can sea level rise seven meters by 2070? And you can find some videos, number of videos I did um, I don't know, four years ago, two years ago, I did a couple videos. So I, thank you for listening. The climate system, the overall climate system and connecting the dots, that's all I'm trying to do to you to explain where we're heading. And if you keep heading where you're heading, you're eventually uh, arrived there. And we're, we're heading to a very, very different world. So thank you for listening.